it's the International Soccer Preview. We are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 25, looking at the players of Euro 2024. This episode is looking at the players of Albania. Here we go! Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is Series 25 on the players of the 2024 Euro Cup. This episode covers Albania's players. Uh, we're doing this media cast in two parts. Part one is a look at the candidates for the squad and their likelihood of making it uh, to the final squad. Uh, we examine the participation of players in games over the recent period and uh, categorize them uh, into their likelihood of making the squad. We take a couple of other factors into account as well. Uh, part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad selected. At that time, we'll go back over our list and see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also cover a couple of other things like injuries and surprise selections. So this episode will have three parts. Section one, we look at some general information on the team. In section two, uh, we cover the main candidates in each position and their likelihood of reaching the final squad. And in section three, we summarize uh, and have some concluding business there. Let's begin then, and uh, we start with some general comments on the squad here. So let's look at some retirements. Um, we had uh, Albania in the 2016 Euro Cup. That was the last tournament they were part of, and uh, all of the players that uh, have retired were a part of that squad. Probably the biggest one is Laura Kanna. Uh, Laura Kanna... Um, Played from 2003 to 2016 and had 94 caps and one goal. Um, uh, what information? Now, I'll just uh, make it quick because we have uh, quite a few candidates. Uh, next then is Ansi Agoli. Uh, he played from 2005 to 17 with 73 caps and seven goals. Both of those were starters in the cup and indeed uh, Laura Kanna was the captain of the team. Thirdly, we have Andy Leela. Uh, he was with Albania from 2007 to 18 with 71 caps. And um, uh, he was uh, uh, a substitute at the beginning of 2016, but gained a starting position. Nevertheless, uh, a veteran player for the team. Um, Beckham Balaj uh, played from 2012 and retired uh, recently. Actually, we don't know if he retired, but he last appeared for the national team in June 2022. So uh, it's more accurate to say these players are off the squad uh, there. So uh, Beckham Balaj, uh, still just 33 years old, so a chance of him coming back, actually. Uh, but not likely. Uh, fifth uh, of six is Amir Abrashi uh, from 2013, also to 2022. He is 34 years old and is still playing club soccer uh, for Grasshopper in Switzerland. Uh, Balage 2 above is still active in his career. I just want to see if the other ones are. Uh, the first three, uh, Kana, Agoli and Lila, have retired from football altogether. So uh, Amir Abrashi um, uh, hasn't played for the last eight matches. So he too, a starter in Euro 2016, is not uh, completely ruled out from participating this time. And uh, finally, not really a veteran, but I think some people may be looking for uh, Paul and Jacka here. Uh, because he's the brother of uh, Granite Jacka, who plays for Switzerland. Um, he was part of the 2016 Euro squad, but has not played for the team since 2019. He is still playing uh, uh, club soccer, though, for Basel in Switzerland, um, Toland Zsaka. Okay, let's look at the club affiliations of Albania. And uh, we do have a couple of players playing for top clubs. We have um, uh, Kirsten Alsan, uh, Christian Alsani, uh, sorry, Christian Aslani, uh, playing for Inter Milan in uh, Italy. And I'd say the other big name is Adrian Bajrami uh, with Benfica in, um, 
uh, Portugal, but we do have players uh, playing for respectable clubs. Actually, almost all of them play outside of uh, uh, outside of um, uh, Albania. Uh, quite a few of them in Italy for teams like Atalanta, um, Empoli, and Sassuolo. We have uh, goalkeeper uh, Strakosha with Brentford uh, in England, and. Um, a lot of them play in kind of smaller leagues in England, like uh, that of Romania. We have two players uh, playing for clubs in Romania, including CFR Cluj and uh, Sparta Prague in Czech Republic, uh, Dynamo Zagreb in Croatia, and uh, so on. A couple in Germany, and um, and then a couple of kind of interesting ones. Um, Armando Saduki is playing for Mohan Begin, a team in India. Another far flung player, um, uh, Jasir Athani, playing for Kwangju in South Korea. And then uh, Toland Safari, playing for Banias in, UA in UAE. All three of those are fairly uh, kind of starters uh, for the team. Okay, that's our look at uh, club affiliations. Let's move on to uh, recent games. So we examined. Uh, their participation since the beginning of uh, 2000, uh, since the beginning of 2023, and Albania played 11 games in that time. And let's just take a look at their participation in uh, major competitions. So, as we saw, the 2016 Euro Cup uh, was actually the last um, uh, last competition they took part in. So, not part of the 2018 or 22. Uh, World Cups, nor the 2020 uh, Euro Cup. So we will mention the players who were on that 2016 squad as we go through them. Uh, let's take a look at formations. So a bit of variety in the formations uh, for um, Albania, but we'll kind of summarize by saying that 45% of the time, almost half the time, it's a 4-2-3-1. Uh, in fact, uh, it's always four at the back for um, for Albania, even though they do mix up the uh, midfield and forward line a little bit. Always two central defenders, uh, a left back and a right back. In the first two games, they employed a 4-1-4-1. So that's with a kind of a stopper um, uh, as a defensive midfielder. Um, and we won't go into too much detail, uh, except to say that towards the end, two of the last three games, they tried a 4-3-3 formation. So that is uh, three midfielders and a three-man forward line. So a bit of variety in there, um, and we will uh, refer to that as we go. The last bit of business to talk about in this section is the friendlies they have. Uh, prior to the tournament. So on June 3rd, they play at home to Liechtenstein, and then uh, June 7th at home to Azerbaijan. So picking fairly uh, weak teams to warm up on there. And uh, we can look and see if uh, what we see in the lineups here hold true um, for those two games um, closer to the cup. All right, let's move on then to our main section, section two. And we begin by looking at the managers. So the outgoing manager actually in uh, 2022 um, is Eduardo, uh, Eduardo Reja, or Eduardo Rea, uh, perhaps it's pronounced. Um, he actually never led them through a tournament. He was their manager from 2019 to 2022. Um, he led them through a distant fourth place finish in their Euro 2020 qualifying group, uh, which had started actually with a home loss to Turkey and the firing of the manager uh, before him. So uh, uh, one game into qualification, they fired him. Uh, Reja didn't do much better uh, there. He finished fourth in that campaign, but they seemed to like him and stuck with him. He did a lot better in World Cup 2022 qualifying, finishing a close third behind uh, Poland. 
however, that wasn't good enough, uh, and they brought in uh, Silvina. I don't know whether he, uh, uh, you know, parted on good terms or anything. Anyway, Silvino, the Brazilian manager Silvino, uh, came in after him. Uh, Silvino was very popular. He led them to a first place finish in qualifying for this cup over the Czech Republic and Poland. So a great result for them. And he received a medal. It looks like a military medal uh, there and also citizenship uh, to Albania, even though he just joined them in uh, 2023. So Silvino uh, leading them through this tournament. I forgot to put the name uh, there. Sylvania uh, also doesn't have any international tournament experience, uh, and that's why his name is in light grey, uh, as will most of these players be, because they don't have a tournament under their belts. Let's go on to goalkeepers, and we'll begin by just listing the candidates and their likelihood. So we begin with uh, Thomas Strakosha as a definite candidate, uh, Etrid Berisha, a likely candidate, uh, also likely Castrati. Uh, oh, I think I've uh, mixed up the name there. Uh, Elhan Castrati. Uh, I'm going to just fix that up in my files. Elhan Castrati, uh, also a likely candidate, and finally Alan Sherry, a possible candidate. So let's take a bit of a closer look at these. Thomas Strakosha is 27 years old and has been with Albania since 2017 with 27 caps and no goals. He uh, plays for Brentford in England. He's not the starter for them, uh, but he's been with them since 2022 and was with Lazio uh, in Italy for seven years before that. He was actually born in Greece. Uh, Strokosha started six of their 11 games since the beginning of 2023, and he was on the bench for the five others, so always selected, uh, but only starts about half of them. Uh, the player who starts the other half is our likely candidate, Etreet Barisha, and he is 35 years old. He's been with the team since 2012, so a real veteran with 80 caps, and uh, he plays for Empoli uh, in in Italy since 2023, was with uh, several clubs in Italy before that, Torino, Spal, and uh, Atalanta, and Lazio, just like uh, uh, Strakosha had been. Um, in fact, they were on the team, uh, the same team, Lazio, for a year uh, together. Uh, Barisha was born in Kosovo, actually, and he was part of the Euro 2016 squad. He was the starting keeper there. Um, now he started five of their 11 games since the start of 2023. He was on the bench for four, but injured for the last two matches. Uh, however, he has recovered from that injury. Uh, the other likely candidate is Elhan Castrati. He's 27 years old since 2022 uh, with Albania and just two caps uh, in that time. And he plays for uh, Cittadella in Italy, a smaller team there, since 2020. He has been with uh, uh, smaller teams in Italy like Trapani and Pescara. Uh, he obviously wasn't part of the 2016 squad because uh, got his uh, uh, really been with the team since just 2022. And uh, didn't start any of the 11 games. Um, but was on the bench for nine of them and uh, just two matches that he wasn't selected for. So he does look like the third string keeper here. Uh, however, we do have Alan Sherry, a possible candidate. Um, uh, sorry, he is uh, 27 years old and with Albania since 2022, just one cap in his case, so uh, one less than Castrati. Uh, he is one of the few players who plays in Albania for Ignacia uh, since 2022. And he first appeared on the bench uh, in June 2021 and uh, recently came back after a, an 11-month absence in October 2023 um, on the bench for three, uh, including the last two matches and not selected for the two others. So we have seen some teams uh, bringing four 
goalkeepers to games and possibly to the tournament. So uh, if that's the case, then Sherry does have a chance, uh, have a chance of making it. But um, kind of uh, coming in late there. Um, oh, okay. I guess he was replacing Barisha, who was injured for the last two matches uh, there. So I would give Sherry a slim chance here. Okay, that is the candidates. Let's summarize the position, uh, position even though uh, the biographies might have uh, given uh, a, uh, a picture. Uh, Strakosha and Barisha alternate in the position. However, they don't exchange every game. It's more like uh, one of them plays three and then the other plays two and then one of them plays two and four, uh, like that. So over the last... Um, little while Strakosha has played the last three games of course Barisha was injured for two of those uh, Strakosha does seem to have the uh, the edge as a starting keeper but given that Barisha was a starter in the Euro 2016 it's hard to say so uh, definitely though one of those two uh, will be the starter all right, let's move on to defenders. And we have uh, central defenders to look at. Again, uh, four, uh, always a four-man back line, so always two central defenders. Uh, our first um, candidate is the definite candidate, uh, Berat Jimshiti. I've seen, like, uh, I think three variations on the spelling of his name. Uh, I go with my default source. Uh, on this one, but uh, uh, Bera, uh, Jim Sheety, a definite candidate. Uh, next, we have two likely candidates in um, Ardian Isma, uh, Is, Ismagli, I'm sorry. I'll say that again, Ardian Ismagli. And uh, the other one is Ania Mihaj, both of them likely candidates. And then three possible candidates uh, for these two positions. One is Arlind Ajati. Next, Marash Kumbula. And finally, uh, John Mercenage. Uh, so those six candidates um, vying for the left-back position. Let's go back and look at them. Uh, we begin with Berat Jimshiti. As I said, he's the captain. And he has been, uh, he's 31 years old has been with Albania since 2015 with 57 caps and one goal. Uh, however, he was surprisingly not selected for the 2016 Euro Cup. Uh, that had come as a surprise because he had played uh, all of their games um, uh, all of their games in the lead up for Sorry, my notes are a little unclear on that, but uh, I do have it down that it was a shock that he wasn't selected. He was uh, selected for the preliminary squad and didn't make the final cut. Uh, recently, he returned after a, a year-long absence. That absence included two separate injuries. Uh, he returned in June 2023 and started nine of their remaining 10 games uh, on the bench for the other. So, uh, Berat Jimshiti... Um, uh, will make this tournament. Uh, Ardiam is is uh, is Madgley is 27 years old. He's been with Albania since 2018 and 36 caps and one goal. He was born in Kosovo. Uh, I should say actually, Jim Sheety was born in uh, Switzerland. Uh, is Madgley was born in Kosovo, and uh, of course not part of the uh, 2016 Euro Cup squad. Is Madgley plays for Empoli in Italy, and he started six of their eleven games since the start of 2023. He too was out with two separate injuries for four games, and that included the last two matches. Uh, but he has uh, since recovered. So Ardian, uh, Ardian is, uh, is, is, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with this name, is Madgley uh, a likely candidate. The other likely candidate is Ania Mihaj, and he's 25 years old, uh, also been with uh, Albania since 2018 with 17 caps, and he plays for uh, uh, Familicao in Portugal um, there, and uh, he got his first appearance uh, um, 
on the bench in 2018. I don't know why I have uh, I said that. He started eight or he started four uh, of their 11 games, including the last two. And he was on the bench for five others. So that's why uh, we have him as a likely candidate. Uh, to the first of our three possible candidates, Arlen Dajetti. He is uh, uh, 31 years old and has been with the team since 2014 with uh, 24 caps and one goal. Uh, he was part of the Euro 2016 squad. He actually didn't appear in game one, but gained a starting position after that for games two and three. And he plays for CFR Cluj in Romania. And he, like so many of them, also played in Italy. Um, in the past, uh, in the period we're looking at, he started two of their 11 games since the start of 2023 uh, on the bench for one and not selected for eight others, including the last four matches. So a jetty, um, possibly not going to be part of this cup, uh, uh, kind of falling off at the end there. Um, the next player, Marash Kumbula, also missed the last two matches, which I'll get to. Uh, Kumbula is 24 years old and been with Albania since 2019, and he has 18 caps and no goals. Uh, he plays for Roma in Italy, uh, but he's on loan to Sassuolo since 2024. But he's been with Roma since uh, 2021, and he was actually born in Italy. Uh, Kumbula. Um, started um, the first of their 11 games, uh, but was then injured for eight matches and returned uh, to appear on the bench for the last two matches. So sorry about that. Uh, uh, I made a mistake there. He was on the bench for the last two matches, Kumbula. So maybe we'll see him uh, um, making his way into the squad again. Finally, we have the uh, last possible candidate, John uh, Mercenage, and he uh, has been, he is uh, 25 years old, has been with Albania since 2022, but just one cap for him. He plays for NK Lokomotiva in Croatia, but uh, yes, yes, he does, since 2018. Uh, so he got his first cap in June of 2022. And uh, in the past year has started none of their 11 games, but was on the bench for four, including the last two matches. Uh, so just like uh, Kumbula, uh, kind of coming back to the team for the last two matches. All right, well, that is uh, it for the uh, presentation of the candidates. So let's summarize the position. Uh, again, always two central defender. Uh, the period started with the pairing of Kumbala and Mihaj. Um, but it was, uh, it's actually Jim Shiti and Ismajli uh, for four games after that. Uh, so they seem to be the central pairing there. Ajeti joined the mix, um, whereas Mihaj kind of popped up here and there. And actually, Mihaj started alongside Jim Shiti for the last two games. So in summary, I would say the period started with Jim Sheety and Ismashli, uh, but now seems to be Jim Sheety uh, and Mihaj. Okay, over to the left back position. We just have uh, uh, one player here, uh, always four at the back. So it is uh, a left defender, never pushes up to the uh, winger position. Um, the two candidates are Mario Mitaj, uh, who's a definite candidate, and Nasser Aliji, who is a likely candidate. Uh, so let's look at them. Mario Mihaj is just 20 years old. He's been with the team since 2021 and has 11 caps and no goals. He plays for Lokomotiv Moscow in Russia and was with AEK Athens uh, prior to that. So um, uh, uh, good credentials there. 
And uh, he was born in Greece. He earned his first cap in 2021 and then was off the team, uh, returned after a more than two year absence in June of 2023 and started all nine of their remaining games since then. Uh, and that's why we have Mario Mitaj as a definite candidate. Uh, the likely candidate is Nasser Alishi, and he's been with the, uh, oh, sorry, he's 31 years old and has been with the team since uh, 2015. Uh, 13 caps and no goals at that time. He plays for Voluntari in Romania and uh, uh, was on the roster for the 2016 Euro Cup. He was on the bench, though, uh, for the whole tournament. Uh, then off the team uh, from, from around uh, 2019, but he returned after a four-year absence in June 2023 and didn't start any games, but was on the bench for four, uh, including the last two matches. So Nasser Alishi, um, also kind of coming back into the team, as we saw with a couple of the central defenders. So those are the two candidates. Yeah, uh, perhaps I'm a bit uh, generous putting him as the, uh, uh, as the likely candidate. I think I'll change that because the profile is more of a uh, possible candidate and he hasn't started uh, any games either. So I'm moving him down to possible. Um, okay, and here's a summary of positions. So um, in the first game, uh, Mitaj, Mario Mitaj was not available. So the right defender who we'll meet shortly is uh, Haisaj. Uh, he played the position in the first game. Uh, but after that, Mitaj uh, returned and played all of the games, uh, as we saw, all of them as a left back. Okay, let's move over to right back. And I've just mentioned the uh, definite candidate here, El Said uh, Haisaj. Um, a definite candidate. And then two likely candidates, Ivan Balilu. Uh, sorry, Ivan Baliu and uh, Frederick Vaselli. Uh, both likely. Let's take a look at them in a bit more detail. So El Said uh, Haisaj is 30 years old, uh, been with the team since 2013 with 84 caps and two goals. So a real veteran uh, for them. And he's been with Lazio uh, in Italy since 2021 and was with Napoli for six years before that. He was a starter in the 2016 uh, Euro Cup there. And um, he started eight of their 11 games since the start of 2023, uh, subbed in for one and on the bench for two others. So uh, steady, uh, uh, steady Eddie there, uh, El Said Haisaj. I think I should say definite candidate rather than steady Eddie. Uh, the likely candidate, or the first of the two, is Ivan Baliu, and he is 32 years old. Been with Albania since 2017 with two, uh, sorry, with 12 caps. Uh, he uh, was born in Spain and plays in Spain. He's with Rayo Vallecano uh, since 2021. Uh, um, and he's played uh, his whole career mostly in Spain, but a little uh, while in Portugal there. And uh, Baliu started four of their 11 games since the start of 2023 was on the bench for five and the only two matches he missed were ones he was injured for so ivan balio a likely candidate also likely frederick vaselli uh frederick vaselli is 32 years old and has been with albania since 2015 uh, with 44 caps and no goals and he plays for uh fati karamu uh uh, I almost had it on the first go there, uh, in Turkey. And uh, like many of the players, uh, played for teams uh, in uh, in Italy. He was actually with Manchester United and Manchester City in English in England from 2010 uh, to 13 with both of those teams and with Manchester City's youth club. So um, uh, he has been around. Uh, he has been around indeed because he was born in Switzerland. 
he was uh, on the team for the 2016 Euro Cup. He was just uh, involved in one game as a substitute. And he has started uh, none of their 11 games, but he was subbed in for one and on the bench for 10. So always selected, but almost exclusively uh, on the bench there, Frederick Vasali, uh, but a likely candidate to make the squad. So uh, let's look at the position, a summary of the position. And uh, once again, it's always a right back position in the four man uh, defense. We saw that Heisaj played as a left defender uh, in the first game when, um, when Mitaj was uh, not available. Uh, so it was um, Balu uh, playing as a right defender there. Uh, Heisaj uh, took over and played most games until near the end, but towards the end the two began to alternate, actually about halfway through that started to happen, uh, each of them alternating over the last six games. So that leaves us in a bit of doubt as to who the starter is going to be or whether they will alternate in the Cup 2. Uh, Frederick Vasali, on the other hand, is uh, pretty much guaranteed to start on the bench. Okay, that's the end of the defense, and we move on to the midfield and defensive midfielders. So let's look at the players uh, coded as DMs. And the first one is Christian Aslani. Uh, he's a definite candidate. And we also have uh, Ilber Ramadani as a definite candidate there too. Uh, Klaus uh, Gasula is a possible candidate. And then we have um, uh, Amir Abrashi, who uh, we noted in section one as being off the squad. Um, we'll say he seems to be off the squad because he was active during this period. Uh, uh, he was on the bench for the first three of the 11 matches and then not selected for the last eight. So um, also Toland Xhaka, um, been off the team for quite a while longer since September 2019. So um, we'll pretty much call him retired or off the squad. Okay, let's go back and look at the main candidate. So uh, Christian Aslani is young. He's just 22 years old and has been with Albania since 2022, but already has 18 caps and two goals. He's the one who plays for Inter Milan in Italy since uh, 2023. And uh, Aslani started 10, excuse me, 10 of their 11 games uh, since the start of 2023 and was subbed in for the other. So a definite candidate in Christian Aslani. Uh, also definite is Ilber Ramadani. He's 28 years old and has been with Albania since 2018 with 34 caps and one goal. And he plays for Lecce in Italy since 2023, but has traveled around a bit. He was with uh, Aberdeen in Scotland uh, and also played in Hungary and Denmark um, as well. Uh, he started nine of their 11 games since the start of 2023 and uh, subbed in for one and was on the bench for the other. So uh, that is the main reason we have him as a definite candidate. Uh, Ilba Ramadani. Our possible candidate is uh, Klaus Gyatsula and he is 34 years old, so uh, a senior player there. Been with Albania since 2019 and has 27 caps and no goals. He's currently with Darmstadt in Germany since 2021, but was with Hamburg uh, in Germany uh, before that. Uh, he um, Started just one of their 11 games, but he did sub in for five matches and was on the bench for one. However, uh, uh, Kiasula was not selected for the last three matches. So that puts a dent in his hopes of making the squad. And we have him as just a possible candidate. Um, we're going to uh, look at the central midfielders before we summarize this position. And uh, we only have two, and they're both at the likely level. The first one is Katie Barre. 
And the second one is Kazim uh, Lachi. And I'm not dead sure I'm saying those names right, but uh, uh, bear with me. Uh, Katie Barre is 26 years old and has been with Albania since 2018 with 29 caps and two goals. Uh, currently playing uh, for Espanol in Spain since 2020. And he started two of their 11 games uh, since the start of 2023. But he was also subbed in for four and on the bench for three. So just two matches that he wasn't selected for. So Katie Barre, a uh, likely candidate. Um, and also likely Kazim Lachi. So he has been, he's 28 years old, has been with Albania since 2020, and has 25 caps and two goals. He plays for Sparta Prague in Czech Republic uh, since 2023, and was with uh, Ajaccio in France before that. Um, Lachi started two of their 11 games, uh, just like Barre there, uh, since the start of 2023. He was subbed in for two and on the bench for four, and the two matches he missed were because of illness. So both of those uh, likely candidates. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, summarize the position. Uh, so... Uh, Defensive midfielder, central midfielder. Uh, sometimes it is one defensive midfielder in a stopper role uh, in the 4-1-4-1 of the first two games. So a very defensive midfielder in that role. But more often it's two defensive midfielders. And um, in the 4-3-3 formation, of course, it's uh, three central midfielders. But when it comes to the 4-3-3 formation, we'll treat it as kind of one defensive or central midfielder, and then a right midfielder and a left midfielder. So let's look at who's filled the position. Uh, uh, defensive midfielder Gasula um, played in the first game as a stopper, but it was central midfielder Barre uh, in the second game there. Uh, we're going to see that Ramdani and Aslani are the main pairing here, but actually in the first game, um, they played as an attacking midfield uh, pairing and from game three onwards became uh, the two-man defensive midfield pairing. Um, when it was just one of them, uh, the two alternated. Ramdami and Aslani kind of uh, alternated in the role, the other usually playing somewhere else in the midfield. Uh, okay, so we will see, I think, especially Aslani popping up uh, uh, elsewhere as we go forward. Uh, let's look at that left midfield and right midfield role. It only exists in the 4-3-3 formation, and that was just two games, uh, the third last game and the last game. Uh, but let's begin by looking at whatever candidates there are here. In fact, it's usually uh, the central midfielders playing this role. But we do have, uh, we have no players coded uh, as left midfield. Uh, and we do have uh, one player coded as a right midfielder. And that is uh, veteran uh, Odis Roshi. Uh, how, uh, however, he is... Uh, um, possible but unlikely. He's a veteran with 72 caps and uh, was part of Euro uh, 2016 there, but um, he didn't start any of the games since the start of 2023. Uh, 2023. He was just on the bench for one game and not selected for the 10 others. So uh, kind of off the squad. Uh, it seems, uh, but he is only 33 years old, so uh, maybe a chance of him coming back into the squad. Uh, so really, no players to review there, uh, and I can summarize the position. We're going to see it's players we've met already, mostly, who are playing there. So uh, as we said, they used it twice, or 4-3-3 formation twice, and uh, defensive midfielder Aslani, um, and uh, central midfielders Barre and Lachi, uh, all three of those players each saw one start in these roles. And uh, the other one who started in that position was attacking midfielder Bajrami, who also started there once. So basically they're slotting 
uh, slightly out of position players uh, when they use that formation. Okay, let's move on to attacking end of the field. Uh, and we look, we divide this kind of into left, right, and central attacker uh, attackers. So um, we've kind of recoded some players according to where they played mostly over this period. So at the left attacking end, we have uh, two likely candidates. The first one is uh, Toland Seferi. And um, the other one is Murto Uzuni. Uh, we're going to see he plays as a forward uh, a little bit too. Uh, we have two possible candidates, Arbnor Mukoli and uh, Arbnor uh, Hoxna, uh, Hoxha. And then we have a player uh, who's uh, possible but unlikely, and we'll deal with him uh, uh, soon. He's actually an English-born player, Anis Memeti, uh, who has been with the team since 2023 uh, with three caps. He plays for Bristol in England. He got his first cap in March 2023, but he didn't start any games. Uh, he was subbed in for the first three games and then not selected uh, after that for the last eight games. So uh, doubtful that we'll see Mameti here. But let's look at the players we are more likely to see. Uh, going back to Tall and Seferi, uh, Toland Seferi is uh, 28 years old, been with Albania since 2019 with 18 caps and three goals. And he plays for Vorska Podlava in Ukraine uh, since 2020, but he is on loan uh, to Banias in the United Arab Emirates since 2023. He was born in Macedonia, was Seferi, and he started five of their 11 games since the start of 2023. He subbed in for three and was on the bench for three others. So uh, almost tempted to put him as a definite candidate since he's been called up for all games. Why don't I be bold and uh, do that? Okay, so we'll move Seferi up to a definite candidate and look at Murto Uzuni, who we have as a likely candidate here. And Uzuni is uh, 29 years old and has uh, 35 caps and five goals since 2018. Uh, he plays for Granada in Spain uh, since 2022 and was with Ferran Ferrossi in Hungary prior to that, also played in uh, Croatia. Uh, Uzuni started five of their 11 games since the start of 2023, subbed in for two and on the bench for two, and uh, was injured for the last two matches. Um, though, strangely, he was injured for his international team, but not for his club team. So uh, I would say he was recovered, but he was never actually injured, at least at the club level. Uh, make of that what you will. Uh, Uzuni is a bit of an attacking player, though, so usually when, when it's a more attacking role on the left, especially left forward, uh, we'll find him in the position. So he'll be mentioned later on. Let's look at the two possible candidates, uh, Arbner uh, Mukoli and um, uh, Arbner Mukoli is uh, sorry, uh, 25 years old and has been with Albania since 2022 uh, with five caps and no goals. Uh, he was born in Denmark and plays for Gothenburg in Sweden, uh, but did play for uh, Vedgli in, in Denmark for seven years before that. And um, um, he was absent from the team for a year, but returned in November 2023 uh, didn't start any games, but he was subbed in for all three of the remaining matches there. So uh, Arbner Mukoli, um, a possible candidate. And uh, the next uh, one is uh, Arbor uh, Hoxha. And uh, he is 25 years old, been with Albania uh, just since 2024, so brand new in the March games there. Um, he didn't start either of those March games, but he was subbed in for both, so he has two caps. And I forgot to say his club, he's with Dinamo Zagreb uh, in Croatia. 
Uh, so Hawks are a uh, possible candidate, and um, we've dealt with the uh, player who's possible but unlikely, Mehdi. So let's talk about the position. Uh, the position um, uh, was a, a, a winger role in the 4-1-4-1 formation of the first two games, but otherwise uh, it's always a three-man uh, always a three-man um, attacking midfield line, so it's a uh, left attacking midfield. Uh, Uzuni played the winger role in both matches, so the first two matches, but uh, Seferi came in as a left attacking midfielder and uh, usually played there. Uh, twice they used a three, uh, sorry, a four-one-three-two uh, uh, formation, uh, and the the basically the attacking midfield line was a bit more defensive and when it was it was their defensive midfielder Aslani and central midfielder Lachi uh, that were used and then the two times it was a left forward role in the 4-3-3 formation uh, Uzuni uh, played it one time and attacking mid midfielder Bajrami uh, played at the other. Now that's a lot to kind of digest, So, uh, but it, it, it really does seem to depend. If it's a more attacking line, it tends to be Uzuni. If it's a regular left attacking midfielder, Safari, and if it's defensive, then we see one of the uh, more defensive players coming into the position. Uh, it's a lot simpler on the right side, but let's begin by introducing the candidates. We have a definite candidate in uh, Jasir Asani, and then we have uh, a possible but unlikely candidate in Arbnor Muja. So I'll dispense with, uh, with uh, uh, Muja because uh, he's not likely to be seen. Um, uh, he got his first cap in September 2023, and was subbed in for five games and on the bench for the next one, and then not selected for the last two matches. That seems a bit harsh uh, to put him as possible, but unlikely. So I'll move him up to uh, to a possible level. Arbna Muja. Uh, he plays for Samsung Sport uh, in Turkey. So... Um, uh, yeah, I think possible is the right uh, uh, designation for him. Okay, let's go to the uh, definite candidate, though, Jasser Asani. And um, he is 29 years old uh, and has been with Albania since 2023 with 11 caps and three goals. And uh, he plays for Kwangju in South Korea uh, since 2022. Uh, sorry, since 2023, he was born in Macedonia and actually played for the Macedonia under-21 team. Uh, Asani got his first cap in March of 2023 and started all 11 of their remaining games. So um, I believe he's the only one to start all 11. Uh, okay, uh, but there is a, 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 a something else to say about Asani, and it's a bit weird. Uh, he has been out with fitness concerns since March. So one wouldn't expect fitness concerns to go on for several months. Uh, but out with fitness concerns and an unknown return date. Stranger still, though, that, uh, that concern on his club record is listed from the beginning of March. And yet he did play the two games in March for Albania. So uh, not sure what's going on there uh, with Kwangju in South Korea uh, listing him as fit for uh, as um, kind of a fitness concern for for three months. Um, nevertheless, he seems to be uh, he seems to be able to play for the national team, which is important because he's obviously uh, uh, a key player for them. So Jasir Asani, uh, we're going to assume that he's not going to be. Uh, out with uh, an injury concern for the tournament. Okay, and this uh, summary is a lot easier to manage. Uh, it's Asani in this role of right attacking player, regardless of the formation. So whether it's a, uh, a winger or a, a forward or a regular right attacking midfielder, it's Asani all the time.
Okay, let's move on to central attacking, and we have Nadim Bajrami as the only candidate, and he's a definite candidate. And um, uh, Bajrami is 25 years old. He's been with Albania since 2021, uh, with 21 caps and three goals, and plays for Sassuolo uh, in Italy since 2023 and Empoli before that. Uh, he is born in Switzerland and played for Swiss uh, underage teams there. And uh, Bajrami started 10 of their 11 games since the start of 2023 and subbed in uh, for one other. So that's the only candidate uh, here as a central attacking midfielder. And uh, we can summarize. So there are two central attacking midfielders in the 4-1-4-1 formation that we saw in the first two games. And uh, we said earlier that it was the defensive midfield pairing of Ramdani and Aslani uh, in the first game. And in the second game, it was also Ramdani, uh, but here uh, attacking midfielder Bajrami accompanied him. Um, Central attacking midfield was a single position for most of the games after that. And it was always Bajrami uh, when it was a single a central attacking midfielder. In the 4-3-3 formation that uh, we saw in the third last and the last games, uh, the position of central attacking midfielder is not used. But we saw Bajrami being used elsewhere as a left midfielder in one game and as a left forward. Uh, in another. Okay, that leaves us with the uh, forwards to look at. So let's move on and take a look. We have no players coded as secondary strikers, so it's just uh, centre forwards here. And we have uh, as a definite candidate, so call uh, Shikalashi as a definite. Uh, two likely candidates, Ernest Mucci and um, Amando Broya. And then uh, two possible candidates in Merland Daku and uh, Ray Manage. We also have two possible but unlikely candidates, so I'll deal with them as we go here. Actually, the first one is a bit of a veteran uh, for the squad with 39 caps and 12 goals. It is Armando Sadiku, uh, who is... Um, playing his uh, club soccer in uh, India with Mohan Begin since 2023. Uh, he was actually part of the Euro 2016 squad and came back to the Albania team after a two and a half year absence in June of 2023. Uh, and he subbed in for one and was on the bench for one, but then uh, not selected for the last eight matches. So. Um, unlikely uh, candidate. The other one is less experienced. It's the German-born Marvin Cooney. And uh, he got his first cap in October of 2023 and um, uh, uh, subbed in for one game and was not selected for the last four matches there. So uh, Marvin Cooney uh, just uh, getting a peek into the team. Uh, and then we have one player who seems to be off the squad. That is uh, uh, Beckham Balage, and he has not appeared for the national team since June 2022. He was also uh, uh, a bit of a veteran who played in Euro 2016. So losing a bit of experience up top, but as we'll see, uh, so-called Shalasi, uh, sorry, uh, uh, so-called uh, Sikalashi is more experienced than both of those players. Uh, he's 33 years old and with Albania since 2014, and he has 61 caps and 13 goals. He plays for Konyaspor uh, in Turkey. He's been with clubs in Turkey for quite a while. Uh, he too was part of the Euro 2016 squad, just a sub in that tournament. Um, uh, and in, in the past uh, year, he started seven of their 11 games since the start of 2023, dubbed in for two and on the bench for two others. So always called up uh, Sikaleshi. Uh, next, uh, Ernest Mucci. Uh, he's just 23 years old, been with Albania since 2021 with nine caps and two goals. He also plays in Turkey with Besiktas uh, since 2024. 
and he was with Legio Orso in Poland before that for three years. He started one of their 11 games since the start of 2023. He was also subbed in for six and on the bench for one. Uh, just one match that he wasn't selected for, and that was the first in March 2023. So we have him as a likely candidate because he's always called up, uh, even if he's mostly a substitute. Armando Broya was born in England and is playing in England with Chelsea since 2020. Uh, in fact, um, almost all of his uh, uh, clubs have been in England, the Chelsea Youth Club, for 12 years there. Uh, but he did do a stint on loan to uh, Vitesse in the Netherlands. Um, uh, so uh, Broya had uh, uh, started the last of their 11 games. Um, he was subbed in for one also. Uh, he was out with two separate injuries for the first seven matches and not selected for two matches after that. So a bigger club affiliation there, but not uh, really playing for the team. But uh, that could be due to injury, and we might actually uh, see him in the Cup. So we have him as a likely candidate uh, there because uh, he was involved at the end. Um, okay, the two possible candidates, Merlin Daku uh, is uh, 25 years old with, uh, five caps and one goal since 2023 and he plays for Ruben Kazan in Russia since 2023 and um, he's born in uh, Kosovo is Daku uh, he got his first cap in September of 2023 and started one of their remaining eight games and subbed in for four and wasn't selected for three but those three include the last two matches, so not appearing at the end there. He actually uh, had five caps for Kosovo in 2020 and 2021 and then switched his allegiance to Albania. So Merlin Daku, a possible candidate. And uh, finally, Ray Manaj, uh, also a possible candidate. He's 27 years old with 32 caps and seven goals and uh, plays uh, oh, since 2015 uh, with Albania, and uh, plays for Sivaspor in Turkey, and was with Watford in England before that, and Barcelona in Spain from 2020 to 2022. He also played for Inter Milan, so he's been with some pretty big teams, uh, but seems to have kind of uh, dropped down in his club uh, quality there. Um, Manaj returned after a two-year absence uh, just recently in March 2024 and started one of the remaining two games and was on the bench for the other. So uh, kind of like Broya there. Uh, Manaj, a possible candidate. I guess we think Broya is a bit more likely because of his, uh, his uh, club affiliation, but um, time will tell. Okay, let's summarize the position of forward. So uh, most of the time in their formation, it is a single center forward. Uh, we do have two occasions on which they they had two forwards, kind of doubled up on the forwards. Uh, when it's a 4-3-3, we consider it kind of one center forward and then uh, a left attacker and a right attacker. So um, we consider that one as far as, as, far as forwards go. Um, so, uh, Shikalashi had a firm grip on the position for the first six games, and on one occasion uh, was, was won the games with two forwards, and Uzuni uh, uh, accompanied him in that game. Uh, however, in the second half of the period, he appeared only once, uh, and four different players got a crack at the starting position, uh, and that's each of the candidates below, Muchi, Broya, Daku and Manaj each getting a start. Uh, Shikaleshi wasn't injured uh, there. He was uh, either on the bench or subbed in. So uh, not sure what's going on um, exactly. We'll have to maybe look at the friendlies in June uh, to see who starts there. Again, in that period, the second half of the uh, period we're looking at, uh, once again, there was uh, two forwards in one of the games. And once again, it was Uzuni who we presented as a left attacker here, um, uh, doubling up with uh, um, whoever it was that <laughs> played that game. Uh, okay, that brings us to the end of our, our section two, our presentation 
of the players. So now we move into section three with a bit of closing business. Uh, so closing thoughts, uh, not a lot to say here. Uh, they do not have a lot of players to choose from. Um, so uh, these small countries generally don't have uh, very deep squads. The, the benefit of that though is the players uh, are used to playing together. So uh, we saw that in a few positions where it's the same players uh, over and over again. Uh, but no real uh, outstanding thoughts beyond that. So let's go on to the next part where we race through the team again and uh, try to determine players that we definitely think will be starters. So we begin with the manager, uh, Sil Silvino. We think with his medal and citizenship of Albania that um, uh, that he is okay. He's going to be uh, uh, part of the tournament. I'm just kind of setting up my documents here to uh, uh, run through again. Um, so we'll put him uh, in a green highlight, which we'll do for the players we're confident we're going to start. Uh, next, we have Tomek Strakosha, Thomas Strakosha, and Etrim Barisha. They seem to be sharing the goalkeeping position, and maybe we'll use blue for that when it's alternating between uh, two people. We're not really sure which of them is going to be the starter. Barisha, of course, the starter in the 2016 Euro Cup, but uh, uh, Strakosha has started more games recently. Um, okay, uh, moving on to central defence, we can uh, with confidence say that um, uh, Jim Shiti, the captain, is going to be a starter. It looked like the... Uh, uh, the partner was uh, Ismadli uh, uh, for the first part of the period, but then Minaj kind of came into the position, so it could be either one of those uh, starting alongside of him. Uh, left back, um, we're confident it's going to be Mario Mitaj there as the starting left back, and uh, on the right side, Elsie uh, Hisaj, or Hisaj, uh, both of those, uh, we're quite uh, certain there. Um, moving on to defensive midfield. Uh, all, uh, the general pairing is, uh, they use different formations here, so um, it gets a bit complex. But the general pairing is Christian uh, Aslani and Ilba Ramadani. Uh, who we think both will be uh, starters in that position. Uh, everyone else on the list um, uh, looking more like substitutes. So we can go up to uh, attacking midfielders. Um, not as confident um, about uh, Serafi. Uh, oh, sorry, Safari, Tall and Safari. Uh, I'm just kind of looking over my notes to see how confident, whether I'm confident enough uh to say and i don't think so um actually i'm more confident that uzuni uh would be a starter uh although uzuni may not be kind of a left attacking midfielder he may be uh more of a left forward there so uh i don't think though i'm gonna uh highlight either of them um just not uh that confident uh on the right though jasir asani definitely a starter except there is the uh, weird injury thing, which I'll talk about when we summarize injuries. I don't think that's going to be a problem, though, so um, I think he will be a starter. In the central attacking midfield, uh, Nedim Bajrami, well, he does move around a bit uh, on the field, so when it's central attacking, he's there, but when it's not central attacking, he is put somewhere else, so... Uh, uh, we think Bajrami will definitely be a starter. And uh, up front, well, after six games uh, into 2023, we definitely would have said Shilla uh, Sikha Shelley uh, was going to be the starter. But given that they used four different players in the last five games, um, or actually five different players, because uh, Sikha Shelley was one of uh, Sikha uh, Sorry, I keep saying it wrong. Uh, Sikalashi was one of them. Uh, it's very much up in the air as to who is going to be the starting forward. So no highlights uh, there. 
Let's finish now with uh, a summary of injuries. And fortunately for Albania, no big uh, concerns. The only one is Jasir Atani, and we explained in the uh, uh, we explained in the um, uh, main part of the media cast that uh, it's a weird situation that his uh, club, the Korean club, South Korean club Kwangju. FC, uh, which is near where my wife comes from, actually, uh, Kwangju FC has had him on the injury list or uh, as a fitness concern for three months. Uh, but even despite that, he played for the national team uh, in March uh, during uh, that period when he was on the list. So uh, again, fitness, a bit of an odd thing to be out for three months with. So not really sure what's going on there. But we do think he will be fit to play for um, uh, for Albania, which is good because he's a key player. I think he's the only one who started all 11 of their games. Let's finish now with a preview of part two, which we'll do when the squads are released and we know who the final selections are. At that time, we'll take a look at any of the notable non-selections uh, here. Uh, are likely or definite players who don't make the squad. Any surprise inclusions, including new players, there's always a couple of them. And then we can uh, have any further updates on injuries, especially Asani, but any new injuries that come along, we can tell you about. So I hope this helps you enjoy uh, when you watch Albania in the Euro Cup. And uh, we invite you back to part two. We would like to thank Mike Tripak, Make Sound Music, and Pixabay for the wonderful background music called Dance 90s accompanying this media cast.